what happens. You see in the bulletin there's two scriptures, one from the Old Testament and then one from the New Testament, which is uh, the New Testament the version of the story that Marie was explaining to us. In the Old Testament, the Psalm 118 echoes what uh, is going to come in the New Testament. The uh, Psalm 118 is on uh, page 565 in the Pew Bible, in the large print Bible, it's page 694, where we read verses 1 to 2 and verses 19 to 29. Luke, in the, uh, we're reading nine, verse, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40, on the Pew Bible, it's page 83, or the large print, it's 101. If you're reading along the Pew Bible, it will not sound like what I'm reading from the, the inclusive Bible. The words are very different. The spirit is the same. Um, we hope the spirit is a thing, but the words are definitely very different. Um, so may we listen with the mind of Christ. May we listen with openness to being changed. May we listen for the word of God. So Psalm 118. I thank you, Yahweh, for your goodness. Your love is everlasting. Let Israel say it. Your love is everlasting. Open the gates of justice for me. Let me come in and thank you, Yahweh. This is the gate of Yahweh. The only, the upright, and only the upright can enter. Thank you for hearing me, for saving me. It was the stone which the builders rejected that became the keystone. This is Yahweh's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day Yahweh has made. Let us celebrate with joy. Please, Yahweh, please save us. Please, Yahweh, give us prosperity now. Blessings on the one who came in the name of Yahweh. We bless you from Yahweh's temple. Yahweh is God, and God has enlightened us. Join the festal procession with palm fronds in hand. Go up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I thank you. You are my God, and I exalt you. Thank you for hearing me, for saving me. Thank you, Yahweh, for your goodness. Your love is everlasting. Turning to the New Testament, to Luke, um, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. Having said this, Jesus went ahead with the ascent to Jerusalem. Approaching Bethphage and Bethany, near what is called the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of the disciples with these instructions. Go into the village ahead of you, and upon entering it, you will find a tethered colt that no one has yet ridden. Untie it and lead it back. If anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? Say, the rabbi needs it. They departed on their errand and found things just as Jesus had said. As they untied the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you doing that? They explained that the rabbi needed it. Then the disciples led the animal to Jesus, and laying their cloaks on it, helped him mount. People spread their cloaks on the roadway as Jesus rode along. As they reached the descent from the Mount of Olives, the entire crowd of disciples joined them and began to rejoice and praise God for the display of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus replied, I tell you, if they would keep silent, the very stones would cry out. The word of God for the people of God.
Bermuda. Just to clarify, since uh, one of your folks brought it up, boys Dominicanos are U.S. citizens. So we're not immigrants, we migrated here. And yet, when my parents arrived in the 1940s and 50s, we were treated less than Americans as we have been since Maria and this government that has consistently told us and demonstrated with its actions that throwing paper towels at us was God's blessings to us and we are still considered less than and second class in terms of citizenship. I'm just going to walk around. This is what I do. So the reality is, like many of you, we have migrated, or our great grandparents migrated or immigrated into the U.S. I've been here before, so hopefully you remember that I am Justo, which means justice in Spanish. Gonzalez II, as you heard previously, I come to you from Michigan and now serving within your midst as your conference minister and discerning with our leadership throughout the country where God is calling us in the next phase of our journey. Because we can never stay stagnant. We can never assume that what we discern 10 or 15 years ago is the same place that we need to be in 2019. And I will tell you that if we were to stay the same as the Illinois Conference, we will die. So I'm here to speak truth, to shake it up, and to acknowledge that something's got to give because we can't continue to support $250,000 deficits on a yearly basis. And last year, out of the $250,000 deficit, $200,000 of it was our two camps. So we need to discern and change things up so that we can provide wonderful and powerful transformative experiences for our young people, but at the same time, not have those experiences kill the entire conference. So we need your help. And I'll do a little advertisement while I'm here. I'm looking for nine college-age students to work in our staff at Tower Hill. We provide room and board and a $2,500 stipend for the summer. And Tower Hill, as you know, is in Sawyer, Michigan, about an hour, hour and 15 minutes away from you. Depending on traffic, maybe an hour and a half. That being said, so do you want to be blessed? Because I came to be blessed. So it was a typical day in my life. I'm there doing my thing, and I trust that every day you kind of do your thing. And some days our things are more important, more pressing, and more active and necessary. Some days Things require that I get up, wake up, and get into action. But this day, this day is chill out there. It's a day to relax and enjoy, and I'm doing what God has called me to do. I am enjoying the grass that's before me. I am grazing. I am tied up, but that's usually my life. But let me stop a second. Imagine if we weren't tied up all the time. Imagine if systems were not designed to oppress us, to hold us back, to force us to do what the system wants us to do. Imagine if I could have my own freedom here as I'm grazing gas. Right, if you haven't figured it out, I'm a donkey. <laughs> and I am living the life except this kind of being tied thing every once in a while gets on my last one good nerve. And I just want to be free. I did not know when I woke up that this morning. I didn't 
realize that my life would be changed and transformed. I did not know that a new reality, something powerful, would happen in my life because my life is always the same as yesterday. And there might be a slight alter in tomorrow, but we can track back my yesterdays to my birth, and it is always essentially the same. We need to shake things up. Because our lives should not always be what they were yesterday. There should be a new reality, a new desire, a new freedom, a new experience that we want to claim. But today, I wasn't expecting that. I was just having breakfast, enjoying my life, and then these two dudes, or maybe it was a dude and a dudette. I don't know. I wasn't there. But what I remember was two people came and I started to ask myself, who are all these two people? They don't look like they're from here. Because every day I see Mrs. Rodriguez and I see Mr. Jones and I see the people that are traveling on the road and I know who my people are. But today something is happening. There's two new people. And for some reason, they're getting closer to me. Now all I hear is the noise that I make, but I'm screaming within me, Get back off, dudes! Why are you touching me? Why are you grabbing the rope? What's happening here? And all of a sudden I see my owner begin to intervene, and he's asking these people, Why are you untying it? Sometimes we don't need to ask why we are being untied. We just need to first God take off the noose, liberate ourselves from that which keeps us tied down and stuck in the same reality of our life because God does not want us. Jesus does not want us to be tied to the same old, same old and come to the point in our life where we just be Accept the reality that is without dreaming what can be and without more than dreaming taking a couple of steps so that you can actually make your dreams come true. So let me ask you, why are so many of you still tied up and raising on grass and enjoying it and saying this is the love? Have you experienced anything other? If you haven't, then it's a valid argument to say, this is the life because this is all I've known. But the Lord and I serve Jesus, who I know wants something better and more for your life, wants to transform you and shake you up and get you to a new place like he did me. And those guys respond to my master, who's also kind of scratching the head and say, Why? What are you doing? And they simply say, The rabbi or the master needs it. And all of a sudden, something kind of happening because. My owner is no longer in the, yo, you better back off, because that is my property, to an understanding of, you can take him. And I'm like, don't you love me anymore? Don't you care for me? Don't you want me to be part of you and your experience? But all of a sudden, I am following two new people to a destination that I don't know. How many of you have been in the same place, following a dream, following a destination, following individuals to a place that you don't know, hoping and praying that it will be better than the place that you just left, but we don't know. That, my sisters and brothers, is called the spiritual life. It is daring to acknowledge that we may not know what's happening or where we're going or whether it's going to be good or bad, but that we trust that the Master, the One, the Holy One, that God is with us and God will journey us to 
more we need to be. And more what a journey I have. I get there and there's this guy. And then I hear him say his name, Jesus. And, and, and even I, even I know who that is. Because, you know, you may communicate in English or Spanish or French or German or whatever language moves my soul, but so do we. And the Lord has sat around. And now I'm starting to believe that not only am I in the presence of Jesus, I'm starting to believe the advertising that's happening about me. I'm starting to believe it myself. I'm starting to acknowledge the good within. I'm starting to acknowledge that God is the one that is able to make me whole and heal and use me in ways that I cannot even imagine. Now, even though I'm a donkey, I am saying, I am a coach. <laughs> and you better treat me with respect and dignity because I am the one. And then all of a sudden, more people are coming and they're throwing their cloaks on me. And I'm like, now what are you doing? Nobody's ever done that for me. So now, I've got my coat chest pumped up and I'm ready to go because something is happening and I'm no longer feeling like I'm just a donkey. I'm no longer feeling like I'm just tied up. I'm no longer feeling just like eating grass and grazing is what life is all about. And I want you to be challenged this morning that you too ask yourselves, what are you doing differently? What does God intend for you? I don't want you to be comfortable in the same old, same old. I want you to vision a future that God intends and dare to take risks and dare to dream. And I want the cult within you to stand up. And be proud of who you are because God intends mighty and good things for you in spite of the fact that others may think that you are less than or unworthy or not sophisticated enough or not tall enough or don't have enough hair or are too short or too big, too brown, too black, too white to whatever, and I want you to just stand and rise up and be the cult within you and say, this is truly the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it, and I will dare to go where I am called to go, and all of a sudden you're helping Jesus get on me. And me! I'm not even the strongest cult donkey. I'm not the oldest and the one with the most wisdom. I just want to be a follower and I just want to do what God wants me to do. And I didn't know that God was hearing my donkey prayers. I didn't know that God was going to respond to my needs and my desire. But here I am, Lord. Use me. Who shall you send? Send me. And all of a sudden, Jesus gets on me. And, well, Something is happening. People are showing up and they're around us and they're crowding us and they're saying praises and singing and shouting with joy and doing something that is totally unexpected of me. And now I am feeling even bigger than a cult. Because I know the presence of God within me. I know the presence of God on me. I know the presence of God as I journey and as I lead and as I go. I may not know the destination. I may not know the exact path. I may not know the exact hour. But I know that I am in the presence of God. I know that I am in the presence of Jesus. I know that God's got this. I know that Jesus has called me even though I will not call myself. See, that was called grace and goodness and mercy and compassion. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Are you 
the one that wants the blessing. Now I can tell you, I may not have great ears, but I know within my soul that if Jesus would have called me directly, I would have found a way to untie myself and to get to where God wanted me to be. So I've been reflecting and asking myself, then why did God send these two other people when God could have just called me directly? And over the years, I've come to the place to come to terms with the reality that while God can do something in and of God's own will, that you too are called. Because God calls you to be the human hands, the human feet, the human action of the Spirit. So while God could have called me directly, using those people that came and spoke to my master, they were listening to the holy within their lives, and they were following God's will themselves. You see, my sisters and my brothers, if you want to be blessed, you've got to bring it. You just can't wait by the side of the road saying, you know, you come. I'll just stay here because I know God's going to provide. I don't need a job. The Spirit will send me some money. <laughs> and yet, what I've learned is that when those two people touched my life, they helped me to get on the path that God was calling me. Who are the two people in your life that God is using to get you to the path of the place that the Spirit wants you to be? And if you don't know, then I invite you to begin to discern and to pray and to seek God's faith so that you might gain clarity. And then I also realize that as great of a day that that was, and as transformative as God using me was, and as beautiful as it was to hear people shout and scream and throw their cloaks on the ground, that I was simply a small part of the journey. I had no clue what was going to happen afterwards. And as I've reflected on my own life, I've come to realize that my joy, my call, my blessing to be able to carry the Christ <clears throat> turned out to be not such a good time and not such a good experience. It turned out to be death turned out to be crucifixion, turned out to be a bunch of people screaming lies, turned out to be the political establishment of Rome and of the church paying dollars so that the sinner would be free. And I, the one who carried Jesus, would see that he, the pure one, the holy one, the living God will be in death. And many more that nobody talks about my tears and my sorrows and seeing my Savior and the one who called me also suffer and die and be crucified. If you want to be blessed, you've got to carry your mask. You've got to bring yourself, your whole self, your true self, even your limits. Because God doesn't call perfect people. Otherwise, I wouldn't be before you. But God calls human people, like you and me who struggle, who make great decisions one minute and then really 
we would love for that. And yet, Jesus rode out of me. And I rode with him. And the Christ is calling you to journey with him too. And whether you are able to accept that call at this particular moment, because I don't know your life and what's happening, I trust and I pray that you will continue to shout, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, and that you will know that you are so loved. Because I finally got it at the end of the journey. I realized that I, as a donkey, was so loved, and that all of God's children were so loved, and yet many could not comprehend it, embrace it, receive it. I trust and I pray that you will take the humble words of this donkey and know that you are loved that you are called, that you are celebrated, that you are encouraged, and that you might be the next one to bring in the triumphal entry and lift high the cross of Jesus Christ in your community. And even though I started off with doubt and despair and confusion, I've come to clarity. I've come to certainty. And I've come to know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Redeemer of the world, and the one that paid the eternal price so that you and even I, let's just go away that humanity language and let's talk about that God did it for all of creation, that all creation is loved and cared for. Be a human cult when you think that you're a god and that you don't know what you can do. Be God's children. Be God's grace. Grab those palms and lift up the cross and wave them with me in the power of God's Spirit so that you know that you are loved, so that you know that you are called, so that you know that even if others see you as less than or sinful or simply an object or an instrument of their will, that they may see and know that you have birth and value and grace and goodness and may you embrace it, receive it, and acknowledge it you are loved. Amen. 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 How long has it been since you told Oh, oh, oh. 
Justice of God compel you. Go in peace and amen. 